The next step I usually take is to remove the wings. As you can see, I've hacked the hind quarters off there. So that part is done. And just want to use a very sharp knife. This is called a boning knife. Uh, cuts through the skin without any resistance. That's the best way to keep from damaging the meat. <clears throat> Kind of cut around the shoulders here. You don't want to damage the breast meat because that's some of the breast stuff. Uh -huh. set camera for this. That way you can kind of see what I'm looking at. But if you've ever done this once, you've done it a million times. So I work with, I like to keep the wings intact. Um, but still down without knocking it over. Nope. <clears throat> So these wing tips, not really much meat on them, but they're good for the, the stock that we're making. Just that in the thing. And then just, I usually just cut this part right here. Makes it a little bit easier to cook. So there we've got. Do the same thing on this side. In the interest of saving a glove, I will not stop the recording. <clears throat> Try and point it towards you guys so you can see where I'm cutting. What I'm aiming for, what I'm not cutting is more important. Don't want to damage the rest. Once you get this loose, comes loose a little bit, should be able to just lop that guy off right there. And I've got the bone in breast with the backbone on it. This is our prize, the backbone um, for our stock. Tip into the pot. Slice the elbow there. And I will, I do two chickens, so I'll save these for the other carcass as well. Now, you can see this fat line right here. This is how we are going to separate the breast from the back. So just kind of follow that as best you can. Try again, try not to cut into the breast meat. Some people I've <clears throat> I've seen use uh, like kitchen meat shears. I've got some. I feel like I've got more control this way. Um, so I do it this way. But do whatever makes you feel comfortable. So once you've uh, kind of sliced that, you can kind of start to separate it that way. It takes a little bit of a little bit of force <laughs> sometimes, uh, especially when it's frozen, which as you can maybe see, uh, this one still got quite a bit of ice in there. Probably just rushed it a little bit. That's okay though. Okay. 
Again, this is our backbone right here. Looks like we still got some neck attached. Um, just want to separate it. Um, this next part, removing the breast from the, or the meat from the breastbone, is always the hardest part for me. I have not figured out a way to make it easier yet. I never, I never do. I will let you guys know. To start the process, I like to score the breastbone, the sternum, underneath there. And then you can see this natural line right down the middle there. I'm just going to cut the skin. Again, really sharp knife helps. So as you watch this, you're going to watch me struggle with this part mightily and just deal with it, because I do. <laughs> and again, I haven't figured out the best way to do this. I imagine the more I practice, the better I'll get. But I've been making this bone broth for almost a year, and it's still... the worst part of the job. So, okay. So what we're working with here, just trying to maneuver this out without damaging too much of the meat. Um, I like to keep the skin on. I do a, uh, a skinless breast and a breastless skin. I'll show you how that is produced. Big, big bone. That's going to have a lot of collagen, a lot of nutrients in it for snack. Stuff's important. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> the stock I made, I make. I, I started by just um, wanted to save money. Um, these chickens I buy from Costco are about fifteen, sixteen dollars for two. I like to use as much of it as I can, uh, which is what led to making the stock. I get a little bit frustrated when I get to this point, so I typically go back and forth and see if I can't get one of them to cooperate with me when the other one isn't. So this, this part right here, this is your tenderloin, you don't want to cut into that, you just want to try and get all this cartilage, rib bones, all of that separated. It's not something that's just intuitive either legs and wings are much easier. The breast takes a little work. So there's the collarbone. So right here <clears throat> is a collarbone. Usually you can, you can spot the fat line right there. You use that as kind of a guide. But I like to physically feel it. So I don't like randomly cutting into into the breast. That's breast and the tenderloin there. I better cut some meat. So there's the collarbone or whatever it is. 
This is not an anatomy lesson. So once you get that out, you can kind of feel where things are going. Knife, once again, going to be your best friend. If you don't have a sharp knife, you can buy one fairly cheaply. I don't like advertising the company that I bought this from. They are an evil corporation. But I don't like to advertise for it. Okay, so we're starting to make some progress on this, believe it or not. So I kind of like to butterfly the, the breast a little bit so that <clears throat> I can separate the tenderloin from the white meat breast piece. And I'm sure there's a way to do this that is much more efficient than what I am doing. If you want to come over and show me how to do it, I'd love to learn self time Gonna be very careful. <clears throat> cut this. So this is our tenderloin right here. So I like to go right up the middle right there. So it gives me two decent sized pieces of breast meat. I don't know about you guys, but a giant piece of breast meat just isn't very appetizing for me. So what I'm doing is I'm smoothing out the skin so that doesn't get Cut out. I might have to check that. That's still a little frozen. So, we got my tenderloin and skinless breast. And then a cut of breast and skin. Do the same thing with the side. I'm just gonna keep it rolling again. Save the save the glove. Don't want to touch my hand, uh, my phone with nasty chicken goo gloves. So we're just gonna keep rolling. So what I'm doing right here is a little bone right there. Cut underneath it and use that as kind of a guide. Um, this is the rib bones right here. One of the rib bones. There's still a bunch of cartilage on this one. So we're going to try and 
bring that off. No formal training in cooking. Uh, I just learned from watching my mom and looking up recipes online. Some of these techniques that I've used, I've, I've gotten online as well. So, a little bit of cartilage from the sternum. This uh, collarbone area. We're just gonna expose the bone so we can see what we're doing. See, this one you can kind of see the uh, fat line, and that's the bone that's inside there. That we, we want to start by getting out. So, cut along the fat line. It a little bit more than I like to right there. Not selling this meat. We're going to eat it. That's what we do around here. So, if I do damage it a little bit, I'm the only one that's going to complain. And I'm not that picky. Usually there's a natural separation that you can spot between the tenderloin and the breast. Uh, this one's not as obvious. Um, that's right there. If you can kind of see where it's separating naturally. Just give it a little help. The gray skin. cartilage here but anyways yeah <clears throat> so I uh, started making this chicken stock to save money um, and I like soups I, I wanted to make a really good uh, chicken noodle soup so, so this is the way to do it and kind of enjoyed the process all that but I noticed my lower back pain is almost all but gone I'm not a doctor I'm not suggesting that you can cure your back pain with chicken stock um, but it makes a lot of sense that you're utilizing parts of the, the bird, the carcass, that uh, you normally wouldn't. And the more I looked into it, the more I learned about collagen and all of that stuff that is really good for your joints. So, don't know what's wrong with my back. Every now and then it still does act up, but it tends to go away a lot faster and is a lot less frequent. Because I'm struggling with this, I'm just going to go ahead and make the separation of the breast and the tenderloin right now 
still rib bones and all that on there. So, we still have work to do, but at least we got this big hunk of meat off there that now I don't have to wrestle with. Package those separate. Um, chicken breasts, I typically will do a just like a, a normal chicken breast meal uh, with this skinless stuff. I like to use this for like tacos, burritos, um, chicken sandwiches, anything where the meat is not going to be served as is. In the, you know, the, as it is constituted uh, after being uh, removed, deboned, whatever. Works really well for that stuff. But you could you could just slap these breasts down, uh, the skinless breasts down on a skillet or grill or whatever you wanted to do and cook it just like a normal breast, if that was your thing. It's obviously going to be a little leaner than the, uh, the other cut of the breast, um, because the other cut has skin on it, and this doesn't. guys can't see really what I'm doing here, but I wouldn't consider this a uh, valuable demonstration <laughs> anyways. Not very, I'm not very good at this part, so you're not missing much. I'm trying to, just trying to get these rib bones off. This is that little piece of bone that, that I started with. Kind of as a guide to get me started and occasionally I'll miss one a bone or two and it'll come come through so I mean like I said not a not an expert demonstration this is just how I get through it <laughs> saves me a little bit of money so <clears throat> Yeah, for 15 to 15, 16 dollars, you can even get it. Uh, the smaller ones are even cheaper. I've seen them as low as even the 13s. Those bones. Oh, 13 dollar range. You can find them at Costco. I'm sure you can find cheaper um, chickens elsewhere as well. I like the Costco ones because I'm at Costco all the time, anyways. So. Um, it's not uh, something that I have to go out of my way for. So anyways, um, now we've got, we've got our breast with skin. Again, I'm not entering in any beauty contest here. We've got two wings. I'm going to do another chicken. Um, those wings will go with those. We've got two skinless breasts. Tenderloins, tenderloins. Maybe that's all they are is tenderloins. I don't know. And our legs and thighs for 